Okay, so jQuery number three, uh, if you didn't catch one and two, they're in the description. We're just going to move on. Uh, so where we left off is we copied and pasted this piece of code four times because we were listening to four different buttons and we wanted to interact with four different panels. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's terrible in that this thing is going to be huge. If we're a little bit smarter, we can actually make one thing that listens to all the buttons and talks to all the cla the panels. So let's do this. I'm going to show you kind of a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, and before we get into that, I need to show you um, how we can target by attribute. Let me show you real quick what I mean by that. I'm going to add this button. And if you guys know from HTML5, if you go data dash, you can make your own attributes. I can go data dash panel equals panel one. And so then what I can do is I can actually find with jQuery, I'm going to go over here to my console and just do it real time. I'm going to look for a button that has an attribute of data panel equals panel one. Oop. There you go. And it found my button. It's that first button. So you can see if I use these brackets, I can enter any attribute. I can actually do this if I want to do um, ID. I can actually search for ID because ID is an attribute. ID equals BTN1. So there you go. Same thing. It found the panel. that I found the button that has an ID of BTN1. So that's how we search by uh, attribute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually add data panel. And I'm going to add the panel ID. I'll actually go panel ID. How's that? Makes a little more sense. And then I'm going to put the ID of the panel that it relates to. Panel ID equal panel 1, panel 2, panel 3, panel 4. All right. So let's get rid of this copy-paste. We're going to be smarter. A good rule of web development is DRY. Do not repeat yourself. Well, don't repeat yourself. This before, this was not very dry. We need to do what's called dry it up. We need to stop repeating ourselves and write this one piece of code that does all the things that the copy and pasting would have done. So now instead of button one, let's get rid of these IDs here. And we're going to add classes instead. Panel button. So now these are all going to be a panel button. Because you'll know you can only have one ID, but we can have multiple classes. So now instead of targeting by ID, we're going to target by panel button. And now this one rule is going to listen to all panel buttons whenever you click. So now if I click on panel button one, or if I click on button any of the buttons, it should be toggling panel one. So progress, not where we want to be yet, but we're getting there. So now what we want to do is we want to do something that's called, let's get the ID, panel ID. Panel ID equals, and we don't know which button was clicked. Because it might have been button one, it might have been button two, might have been button three, might have been button four. So what we actually want to do is this. No pre no quotes, no double quotes, just this. And so what that means, whenever you do jQuery this, it's going to take whatever the action was on, and we're going to start using that guy. So I can go this dot attr data panel ID. So that's going to look for an attribute of data dash panel ID. That's going to give me what that is. So now panel ID, if I go alert panel ID, what it'll do is it'll get the panel ID and then it will alert it to me. Here, I'll show you. Panel one. If I click here, panel three. So now we know what panel we want to do something with. Great, we're almost there. Um, so instead of alerting panel ID, I want to do hash plus panel ID because I didn't store the hash up there. I guess I could have stored the hash up there if I wanted to. But for the sake of the lesson, I'll show you how to put two strings together. So we're going to put the hash plus panel ID, which doesn't do addition. It just kind of bumps them together. So hash plus panel ID, toggle. So now we're going to listen to any panel button. And when you click on it, it's going to grab the panel ID out of that button. And it's going to then go find that panel and toggle it. Let's see if it works. Nice. Nice. And we win. We dried it up. We added one more line to our code. And we have a much, much cleaner thing. 
Uh, you Another way you can dry stuff up is say, whenever you click this, you want to show it and you want to you know, give it some new content. So what I can do is um, var content equals my new awesome content. So now I can not only toggle it, but I can make sure that panel ID plus panel body HTML is content. No, no quotes, no double quotes, which means I'm looking for a variable. If I did quotes like this, it would change it to the actual text of C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E which is kind of what it already is. I don't want that. I want it to look for a variable called content that I made up here. I made a variable called content, and I said it's my awesome new content. So now it should. There you go. They're automatically going to get my new awesome content. Great. Another thing uh, you can do is you can do HTML empty quotes to just kind of clean it out. So now when you click on it, nothing at all. So that's kind of a way that we would dry up jQuery and start to reuse things. That's also how you find out more information about who has clicked that this thing. This, I could also go this ATTR ID if I wanted to find out the ID of whoever was clicked on. Um, and that's going to alert my ID. Whoops, can't do that because there are no IDs anymore. <laughs> I got rid of the IDs, didn't I? Yep. Well, if the IDs were still printed on here, you'd be able to do that. So anyway, that's how you dry up jQuery.